Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at throwing exceptions in Java. So we've still got some more stuff to look at in the realm of handling exceptions but I thought first we'd take a look at how to throw them. So I'm going to create a new class here. Let's create a new class and I don't really know what to call it so I'll just call it test or something like that and I'll give test a method. I don't want a main method but I'll give it some kind of method. Let's say public void I don't know run or something like that. This is just stuff that I'm making up off the top of my head and I'm gonna let's assume that we want to call run in the main program here so we could say let's say test test equals new test and then we want to call run, so we say test.run. And in test.run, let's just put a sys out so that it does something. I'll just say running successfully. And let's, let's just run this and check that it works, which is always a good idea. There we go. Now let's suppose that run actually has to do something that could go wrong. So I, I don't know what, but um, let's imagine that it could go wrong somehow. So let's say um, int value equals um, naught, and let's imagine that this is some kind of, but let's not call it value, let's call it code. And let's imagine that this is um, some kind of return value from some complex process and um, we'll imagine that zero means success so zero equals success and any anything else like um, anything else is um, you know like one two three is going to mean failure so let's say anything else equals um, error code now you throw an exception when something goes wrong in your code. So, I mean, there, there are kind of slightly different schools of thought on when you should throw an exception. Because uh, back in the days when I was learning C++, I always read that you should only throw an exception if something goes wrong that shouldn't happen. And in Java, the same philosophy is kind of followed, but not really so rigorously. Because, for example, if you have some code that looks for a file and then you throw a file file not found exception, and imagine that that happens whenever the file happens to not be there, but it's just some random file which could be there or could not be there, then throwing and catching a file not found exception becomes part of the normal operation of the program. And arguably that's bad coding, but different people seem to have a different opinion on that. But the bottom line is, an exception is for when something goes wrong and some people say that this should be something which is not expected to happen during the normal running of the program but people do differ about that. So we'll assume that something's gone wrong and we'll say that if code is not equal to zero then this means something's gone wrong so something's wrong and we're going to throw an exception and the way we do that is, firstly, in the method header here, we have to say what kind of exception the method might throw. And so you need to pick kind of a suitable type of exception. And if you go to Google and you search for Java, possibly your version of Java, let's say 7, and exception, and then go to the API doc for, for the class exception, you can see a massive range of subclasses here which you could throw and some particularly common ones are for example file not found exception and IO exception so you could pick an existing exception to throw from one of these and you could also throw exception itself you could just throw exception although that's considered kind of bad practice and let's imagine that you've looked at all these different exceptions and you decided that 
IO exception is the one you want. IO exception. IO exception uh, means input output exception. So you could throw this if something goes wrong with the input or output of the program. So let's say here throws IO exception. And uh, so let's, let's throw with a lowercase t because this is a keyword and the keywords have lowercase letters and IO exception uppercase i because this, this is an actual class. Exceptions are classes. And now here, where, where the thing actually goes wrong in your code, if it goes wrong, you can say throw new IO exception. And exception classes, they all allow you to specify a message here. So we could say here something uh, went wrong. <laughs> Actually, that's a terrible error message. How about um, could not connect to server, something like that. And now you'll, you'll see that I, now that I've saved that, I've I've got an error in main. And notice I'm not throwing that exception at the moment because the code is equal to zero. So this won't run. All that will happen is this, it says running successfully. But the point is that this this is, could be a return code. And here we're, we're checking has, has something gone wrong. And if it has, only then will we throw an exception. And if we throw an exception, it will leave this method at that point and bolt straight out of it. And we're now forced to handle this here. So I'll use what then the stuff we saw in the last tutorial. I'll click the error message and surround with try catch. And here we could say e.printStatTrace, or we could present some kind of error message to the user. Or I could do something like sysout e.getMessage. And get message will return that, me that message that I supplied to the constructor right here. So if I save that, the error goes away. And if I run it, well, it says running successfully. But if I now change this to be one, let's say, and now I run it, it's going to say could not connect to server. There's just one more thing that I want to show you in this tutorial, although there's going to be a bit more to say about exceptions, which is what if you don't find an exception that you like the look of, you don't find an appropriate one, you can create one of your own. So I might create a package here called exceptions actually, but for the moment, let's just bunk it in this default package. So I'll right click and I'll go to new class. And let's call this server exception. I don't think there's already a server exception. And I don't want a main method. And I want this to extend exception. So I'll type here for the subclass exception. I'll click browse and I'll browse to java.line exception and click finish. So we've got a class server exception which extends exception. And I'll also give it a constructor. So I'll right click and go to source and generate constructors from superclass. And I'll just use the constructor. I'll say deselect all. And then I'll select just the one that takes a string as its, um, as its uh, sole parameter. And you can also supply other exceptions that are the root cause of this exception, but we'll just stick with a message for the moment. So I click OK. And uh, I'll just let that go to super. Um, invoke the superclass constructor here. So this doesn't actually do anything new and you could make it do stuff, new stuff if you want. You could give it new fields, new methods that allow you to provide new information about the nature of the exception. But for the moment I'll just leave it as it is and I'll change this IO exception to server exception. In fact what I'll do is I'll just comment this out and Let's just paste this down here and I'll change this now to server exception and I click save and let's look at the error and I'll now I will change this here to server exception as well so it throws a server exception and here I'll also change this to catch server exception. And we could we could have made um, server exception a subclass of IO exception if we think that server exception 
is a type of IO exception, then we could have made it extend IO exception. But here I'll just create a brand new exception with the exception class as its parent, and we'll save that. And I'll just run that, and it's the same result as before. If the exception's thrown, it catches my server exception, and in this case it's printing the message. And we could also say something like e.print stack trace if we want. And then if I run that, we'll also get this kind of error message and we can find out where the exception occurred. And I can even click um, a bit further up the stack trace here and find out precisely where it originated from. And notice that we, if we throw the exception, we don't run this line because as soon as you say throw new exception, it leaves the method that you're in. So that's it for this tutorial, and we'll look at exceptions a bit more shortly. But until next time, happy coding.